So we're talking about friends today and um, chosen family. So um, a friend hopefully is someone who asks how you are and when they ask how you are, they're really listening to you. So there's a conscious embodied asking sharing and listening and there's like a conscious flow of this so here at queer sangha over covid a lot of us have been here the community changes um, over the weeks and months and years but there's a lot of similarity in the people who come to queer sangha um, and that's really nice there's all this interconnectivity of friendships like in this space outside this space and we are a resource to each other. And during COVID, we found a lot of resilience here. And there was a lot of care and support amongst the Sangha in, in that we have that deep listening as part of our um, container. So that's helpful to feel that we're like listened to, that we are seen and heard, even if we're on the flat Zoom screen. So I wanted to ask you all, you can put it in the chat. Um, what, wh what is a friend? Like what, how do you view who or what is a friend or what does friendship mean to you? So if you just wanna put that in the chat, um, you can think about it for a minute. Like who, well, what kind of person is a friend? What does friendship represent to you? You can also just think about it in your mind, in, in your body, in your heart. So we have some answers coming into the chat here. And feel free to read them or I can read them if you can't, if you don't wanna look at the screen. So Twinkle says, being able to laugh and be sad together. Um, Elena says, being with my, being myself with someone else and sharing the human experience. And feel free to add some other things in the chat if you want to. Um, I also came up with some things about like, you know, that feeling of connection, that feeling of belonging. And like, like a friend for me is somebody who stands by me, you know, in good times and in bad times. And in this world, it's really nice to have someone who you have a have mutual aid with, that it's reciprocal. Um, and then I also thought about friends as historians, friends as uh, foundations for the rest of your life, and friends who kind of anchor you. Oh, I, some more came in in the chat. Friendship rests at multiple levels, but I'd say the core of it is it is a shared sense of camaraderie. And then there's being there for the other and for ourselves and sharing all kinds of empathy and joy. So these are really beautiful. And for anyone who's just joining us, we're writing what friendship means to us in the chat or just thinking about it in our minds. I also think that friendship is just such a beautiful place where you can like turn to when you're feeling down and um, you know, your friends can uplift you sometimes. Not that it's their job to do that, but you know, with the laughter that helps that, that uplift or the, the sharing. And also it's so such a beautiful way to love, like uh, like loving, you know, in this platonic romantic way, like without lust, 
is kind of like refreshing um because there's a lot of like you know love with with sexuality and the love you know an asexual love is just so incredible another thing about love that or love and friendship more friendship i guess i'm thinking but um is how long it takes like it takes a long time like you can have a quick friendship but like a friendship that goes on for a really really long time is just so so precious like my best friend in montreal like we met in high school in 1986 and she was a cheerleader and i was a goth and we're still friends and this is a quote if you want to look in the chat about like time and um it's by antoine de saint exuberi sorry for my pronunciation but nothing can match the treasure of common memories, of trials endured together, of quarrels and reconciliations and generous emotions. It is idle having planted an acorn in the morning to expect that afternoon to sit in the shade of an oak. And this just talks about like how long, you know, friendships are, you know, hopefully some of us will know each other when we have white hair. Friendships take so much time and energy and, and that, that's that slow build. Um, and even if you have one deep friendship, you know, you're blessed. And if you have, you know, more than one, you're super lucky. But if you think to your friends on Instagram or Facebook, like how many of them could you call if you were really sad or really upset or you got in an accident? Like who, who are your real friends? um you know not your social media friends like when I was young I used to party quite hard a lot of you don't know me from from those days because I'm sober over 20 years but I had a lot of friends but you know what was the quality of those friendships um there for me that like that those party friends they were very shallow and now you know I when I got sober I moved into like a deeper type of friendship I started finding out about platonic romance like just that deep love of friendship which I you know I cherish cherish deeply so if you want to make yourselves comfortable we're gonna we're gonna do a bit of a friendship contemplation now so you can lie down you can turn off your cameras you can do a task around your house get some tea whatever you want to do uh, there's some snow removal sounds here to for people to move their cars. I hope it's not too loud. Okay, so let's start the friendship contemplation. If you, if you feel like it, you can also get a journal. If you feel like writing, or you can just think about it in your mind. So in your friend group, thinking about who truly sees you, and truly hears you. And who do you feel comfortable and safe with? Maybe this is a friend who lives nearby or maybe it's a friend who lives far away. Or maybe it's even a friend who has passed to the other side. And thinking about your life during COVID, like who did you see most? Who did you talk to on the phone? I'm just thinking about like who has visited your house in the last while and whose house have you been inside? And just taking a moment here to feel into embodied gratitude for these wonderful friends in your life that you trust 
to let into your life and your heart and your home. And taking a moment to reflect on the things you love about those people. Could be animals as well. And those things that you love in your friends, do you offer them to yourself too? Do you offer them to your friends? And thinking back through time, this is a bit more challenging, so feel free to put a hand on your heart here or anywhere else in your body that feels supportive. But have, have you ever disposed of friends or have you ever been disposed of? Most of us are familiar with dispos disposability culture. And this is something that's very, present in queer community. My teacher, Daryl says, do not throw anyone out of your heart. Is there anyone you can think of right now who you would like to mend a conflict with? Maybe someone that you've fallen out with. Is there someone you miss that you had a rupture with and that you want to repair with? So just giving yourself some extra love around that because that can bring up some feelings. And I'm gonna head back to the Dharmet now after that contemplation. So we can spiritually develop over time with our chosen families. You know, when we take the time and energy to repair over small or medium or large conflicts. And, you know, having friends who really know us can kind of give us reality checks on all the different situations that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, it's hard, it's challenging, it's difficult to make these repairs, but, you know, the practices of loving kindness and compassion to ourselves and to our imperfect friends um, and forgiveness can help us soothe and heal our hearts because we need each other on this path to co-regulate our nervous systems together, you know, to have someone or some people to journey on this bizarre path of life together. And, um, you know, it's just like family. There's, there's disagreements and joys and sorrows but we have the choice and hopefully we have the capacity with all the metta and compassion practices we do to hold all of these different kinds of experience with, with kindness. And if we can't be kind, you know, we can just accept. And it doesn't mean that we have to agree, it doesn't mean we have to be right. Um, and it doesn't have to be a binary, like a, I'm good or, they're bad or, you know, vice versa. Like, you know, we're all a mixture of, of good and bad and we're all changing every day and we all have a shadow side. So often the things we don't like in others are the things we don't want to look at in ourselves. And that's a gift to be able to realize that deep insight. So Yeah, maybe think to a time lately when a friend really showed up for you. What was that like when you reached out and they reached back?
and feeling into what, what that's like in the body for someone to reach back to you when you reach out. And maybe that reaching out is to yourself, like we can be a friend to ourselves, you know, we can release any microaggressions that we might do to ourselves, we can, you know, confront that inner critic, and let them know that they're no longer welcome. And my one of my favorite things about Buddhism, and the, my favorite things about this topic is that Buddha had this cousin named Ananda and he approached the Buddha and he was like, you know, Buddha, I was wondering, um, is half of the spiritual life like based in friendship and companionship? And the Buddha said back to him, no, he's like, do not say that Ananda. Good friendship is the entire spiritual path, the entire spiritual life. So I find that so fascinating that like, the Buddha was like, friendship is everything, you know, the conversations we have each other, the way we evolve spiritually together. It's not something we can do alone. You know, we, we have to do it in friendship and community. It's how we grow, how we co-regulate and, you know, just are at peace as humans. We're, we're meant to be social, even if we feel sometimes very antisocial, you know, sometimes we need to go inside, but innately you know that's how we grow is with with each other so take care of the company you keep you know try to spend time with friends who are wise as we're so affected by our friends um and then we can also ourselves abandon unskillful behaviors so we can become a better friend um and you know if people are scary for you right now, that's also okay. You can also practice with plants and trees and pets and that kind of thing because they're all we're all interconnected. We're all interbeing together. But I love this quote by Ani Nin. I'll put it in the chat. So each friend represents a world in us, a world possibly not born until they arrive. And it is only by this meeting that a new world is born. I love that because, you know, we're, we, we are different friends bring out different things in us and different worlds we can kind of create together. So I love that. And, um, you know, even though it's not perfect, even though we're not always in harmony because of our own weird habits and preferences and behaviors you know but you know it's the starting ground friendship is a starting ground for trust and community and other kinds of love um even though we're all imperfect here is another quote by Thich Nhat Hanh. it's from the muck that the lotus grows and so, you know, these disagreements we have with our best friends and this, there's rupture and repair, you know, can build like deeper trust and deeper friendship, you know, with that self-compassion, that steadiness, that willingness to, to deepen, deepen the friendships and be fully seen in all our complexities. And when that fear dissolves, you know, we can feel more connected, finding refuge in each other. You know, what, like I said before, we're not meant to do this practice alone. We're meant to, to do it together. And um, before we do our med meditation, I just wanted to say this random fact to you all, which I find really interesting. Um, studies show that friendship is more important than longevity of life. That not, it's not about not smoking and exercise um, that, that makes you live a long time. It's actually loneliness that um, is, is worse, worse for you than smoking. So I find that really interesting that loneliness is worse for you than smoking, but like, you know, not saying that you should smoke, but 
but just that that we need this friendship for for a long life so with that we'll go into meditation so if you are not already in a comfortable position you can find one and welcome and we're just starting uh, the meditation for those of you who just joined us so hi so i will ring the bell let me see there we go So just letting all those words settle in the body. Notice any sensations that are arising. I'm taking some deep breaths to arrive more fully in the body. Noticing what's underneath you, how it's holding you. Just allowing yourself to be held by gravity by your cushion or chair or bed. Notice any sensations that have changed or changing. And what's it like to arrive into stillness? knowing we're breathing together here.
in the different neighborhoods in Montreal and in other provinces and states. Breathing together in friendship. Moving towards our own liberation from suffering. and for each other's liberation from suffering. And our deep wish for an end to collective suffering in our province, country, in our world. And feeling into the body, maybe putting a hand on your heart if you need to, if you want to, or a hand on the belly as well. And feeling into the hand or hands. Feeling into the warmth and care. Inviting the body to soften. And on the out breath, letting go of anything that's not serving you right now. And you can keep your hands there if they feel good. Or bring them down if you want to. And thinking back to that friend you thought of during the contemplation. The friend that you feel you could count on the most. 
Maybe there was friends, maybe it's an animal or birds. And just thinking of these beings around you now. Maybe they're next to you, in front of you, they're cuddling you. Feeling into that energy of deep friendship. And how does the body respond when your friend comes and sits next to you or near you? What are the sensations that arise? Is there a tingling, a warmth, an expansion, or something else? And taking a moment to wish your friend well, or your friends. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be protected. May you be free from fear. May you be free from anxiety. May you be at ease in your body. And may your mind be at ease. May you be healthy.
May you know peace. May you find as much joy as possible. And I'll end the friendship meditation with a poem. It's by someone named Mita in a book called The First Free Woman. Full of trust, you left home and soon learned to walk the path, making yourself a friend to everyone and making everyone a friend. When the whole world is your friend, fear will find no place to call home. And when you make the mind your friend, you'll know what trust really means. Listen, I have followed this path of friendship to its end, and I can say with absolute certainty it will lead you home. <laughs>